Hello folks, welcome back to the garage. Now I just wanted to crack on another another step with the trailer, um, move one further forward, we're, we're closing in now. Um, I actually went beyond my normal practice and sat down and made a list last night and there's still quite a bit to do, oddly enough. I've got to uh, probably do about six or eight jobs, finishing jobs, that each of them are a job. They are a couple of hours in the garage each time just to get it finished. I could obviously have towed this thing up the road a month ago when it was done and I did that bend in the neck, that cut and fill it, bent the neck up so it was at the right height. At that point, physically, I could have hitched it up and, and towed it up the road, but it's not finished. I saw a car video I was watching, a guy did his car, he got to the point where the engine was in and the transmission was on and he put a seat in it and started up and drove it up and down the road. And I'll tell you what, he's lost interest, he's gone off the boil, his project seems to have disappeared, I think that's what happens, I think you reach the end too quickly, you've got to finish the thing and I'm going to finish this completely before I take the road. I've still got to put the wiring on the bike, I've got, that's, that's one thing that's nagging at me really, I've got to put the wiring loom on the bike, scotch lock and connect in. Uh, there's a caravan shop nearby, I'm going to go and see if they do a little kit or something that I can just lock into the indicators and brake light so I can connect up the trailer board, which is all now done. Um, got to get some grid fill, got to go to the shop and get a drain hole, which I'm going to put in the corner of it which, so it doesn't fill up with water. Um, and even this morning I hatched a new idea for a lid, which probably won't happen, but I've got some materials which may work. I may be able to make a lid for it so that ultimately when it's being towed, it'll be a box rather than open, uh, and then sort of tarps and bungees won't be necessary, which would be nice for all the hooks on it. There we are. Anyway, we've got some chains. Okay. Right, now as you have seen already, I'm sure I've shown you these a couple of times, um, I've got the Jacob Marley's. Uh, this is some garden chain, they had a special deal. Kind of a nylon chain. Um, we've got it on Project Bandit, which, as you've already seen, um, on the rat damage, looks pretty cool and I want to use this to tie in and it's ever so simple um, I'm not going to make a big old song and dance about this I'm just going to string it between these ones now these particular two links here I did this I put those on for a reason these hooks are for bungeeing the loading but these particular ones here and under here are not they are for this um, so really the simplest thing is to just get these there's no there's no big how-to here, so all I'm going to do today is join some of these in. There's a technique I'm going to use with the old soldering iron, and hope not to pick up the wrong end of the soldering iron, again, and uh, get them on there, get them looking good. They're a bit shiny at the moment, but the weather soon sees to that, as they have on the bike. Um, they kind of get bead blasted by the sand and the grit on the, on the roads. Um, so that's the basic idea, it's just going to go between there and the back. Um, maybe some to the front, and that will just add a bit more decoration. So stick around, stay tuned, let's get the soldering iron cranked up. I'm going to cut this with the old hacksaw, purely because you get a nice straight cut in. And if you cut it, you can cut it with pliers, obviously it's only plastic, it's only soft, but then you don't get a clean cut, and I'll show you why you need that. All right. So first one, Like I said, it's ever so soft, it's just nylon really, made of the same stuff as cable ties. So it's nice and squishy. Do that with it. And an idea to show you with this one. Take your solder and iron, it's like a, like a cable tie, it just melts back together. Just mind your fingers. And it smells great. So I want a bit of a bit of a sag to it, but there is going to be one underneath it, so I don't want to be too much. I reckon there. Uh, in that one. Just in case of choosing which length to cut. That's too tight. That's too loose, so no choice, just be that one. Again, just right. Let's 
second one in underneath. And the plan is to go below it. Right. This again. Sit this way, just press it on it, and melts it. And just for a bit of strength, use the remnants of the cable tie. Some nylon to cut through it. A little piece of cable tie in there. Just hold on it. You can plastic weld all, all sorts of things like this. If you split a bucket that you wash your car with, or kids' toys busted the dustbin, your wheelie bin, anything that gets split that's nylon will will solder with a uh, soldering iron. And just use a cable tie as uh, effective solder. It's a bit messy, but with a bit of time like this, you can smooth it out, make it quite a respectable job. And if it's an external job that you really want to look good, you can just sand, sand it down in the normal way. If it's a piece of body work on your bike, you can use uh, um, a body filler, Bondo uh, sandpaper and paint it. Um, if you go further back I've got a video somewhere back or if you just look up plastic welding Delroy's Garage plastic welding I've done a whole section on this because when I first got the bandit there was a couple of lugs broken off um, you know those little plastic um, lugs that you pop in on the fairing that hold the side panels on they were both broken off so I plastic welded one back on there we are I just said you can you can cut this with a with a pair of pliers just just snip it but it um, then you get kind of a pinched cut like that and it's quite hard to plastic weld so I'll do it that way. But just while I'm doing this, um, I wanted to pay another little bit of respect to someone. I do now and again mention other YouTubers that. I want you to have a look at people that I follow um, who mean a lot to me and it seems that when I ask that you do which is great because I don't do it to get those particular YouTube people more hits or more subscribers or spread stuff the other day I got a spam mail well I got a mail that said um, I love your videos etc etc um, you should do this blah 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 um, if you want to get more hits sign on to spreadmyhits.com and it's some website that you sign up to and it gets you more, I don't know. And it's just spam. I don't do it because I want to get more people more hits. There are some people out there that are on the tube and they do deserve more subscribers and more hits. They're just not known. People just can't find them. It's not easy. It's only when you're wilfing something. Um, you know, wilfing. Wilf, what was I looking for? That's it. If you, um, you're out there and you just stumble across something and then you find, or you're Googling something particular, um, you can find something great and you can start following it and it can become a, a, one of your staples. So I just wanted to say that's really how I started this. Um, I wanted to pay some respect to someone very special. I say it quite often and this particular person I really should have said it about a long time ago. Some time back, probably about two years ago, I did a little list of people that I suggested you look at and it worked quite well. But it was just a little list, it wasn't anything major. I just want to make a proper point about this particular YouTube member. Now. Probably a couple of years ago, I was just wilfing and looking around for something to gaze at, and I just, I just googled hot rod, um, hot rod build, because often with hot rod builds and on so many other builds, you don't get anything to watch. You just get a start and then a finish, um, which is a bit boring really because they're not very long. Or you get three or four videos of a build and then you don't get any more. It just disappears. So this particular person was building a rod every single day. He was doing something new and it followed through. 
And the things that he was doing were great. They were just the sort of thing I'd do. Um, one thing in particular as we're going through, he made an expansion tank for the water system on his hot rod from a paint can. Just an old paint can. That was fantastic. It's exactly what I love. Now, I just want to make a mention to this person. This person is what I might call my mentor. This is the person that I copied or I asked permission. I wrote to him and I said, can you, you know, is it okay if I do similar videos to you? Um, would you mind if I sort of slightly copied what you do or got some inspiration from yours, etc.? Guy came back to me and said, not only yeah, go ahead. He gave me some insight. He said, this is what you should do. You should start your videos with a, uh, a piece of camera. You should finish it with a piece of camera. You should explain what you're doing. You should point at things, etc. Now, that tuber is called Dan Bethel. Dan Bethel's become quite a good friend, I like to think. Um, he's in California. Um, he's at what I might term a classic Californian. Blonde ponytail, no shirt, even in the winter. And he's a bit of a dude. Uh, he's a musician, a sage, and a wise person. He's got a lot of insight. He's a qualified and experienced carpenter. And he does amazing carpentry. He can weld. Um, he can paint. And he can build cars. And I think people like that are rare on YouTube. So... Here's a link, Dan Bethel. Now if you go back about two years ago, you can also look up BBHR, which is Bethel Brothers Hot Rod. Because when I found him, in the beginning, Dan was doing, uh, he was building a 50s truck with his brother Joe. Um, they were building this truck, stage by stage, every single day doing something a bit different. And his brother Joe is, is from what I can work out, Joe Bethel is more, probably more, engineering qualified than Dan but he doesn't have the same charisma and personality they fit well together as a team and between them they built a pretty wicked hot rod this 50s truck was awesome and some of the way it was dealt with some of the, the things that were in the build um, were amazing truly amazing and I was really impressed with it and I think like so many things once it was finished or got to a point where Dan had done all he could he sold it and since then he's been doing all sorts of other things He's got a Kawasaki ZX6R from what I can work out. Um, and at the moment, he's doing gold mining. So if you, I think it's Iron Fist Mining is where he's at now. The guy just does all sorts of things. He builds, uh, he's built a wash plant, which is a, an apparatus for putting in a river for sending the aggregate through uh, and retrieving the gold, or the shiny, as Dan calls it. So... Um, have a look at Bethel Brothers Hot Rod, or Dan Bethel. Look it up. Dan is uh, what I'd like to consider a friend. He's a special YouTuber. You need to subscribe to him. But go back to one. He's got about 480 videos. Go right back to basics. Go right back to Project Sam. Project Sam is the hot rod. That's a 50s truck, a 50s Chevy truck, which um, he built and did some amazing stuff to. His attention to detail uh, is brilliant, and I love it. And I think it's the sort of YouTuber that we would all wish to be. So have a look. Dan Bethel. There's a link. And see what you think. Let me know. Say hi from me. It's one of those things that I think we should all do. Is spread, spread the, the good YouTubers that we know amongst ourselves. So that we can all benefit uh, and become a family. I don't think da, uh, Joe, uh, Dan and Joe, I don't think they do the, the garage gang thing. I um, don't think they're into that by any means. But... They just do their own thing, and I think they are very much free spirits. Um, unique characters, both of them, so give it a look. There you go, how daft is that? Now I may not keep these uh, extra ones, and I may tighten them up a little bit, I don't know. But all that is on now. Got a fair bit left. Uh, Probably a good 10 foot left, but that was the general idea. Quite like it, Edson. What do you think? Not far off now. Now, just a little suggestion last night, I was having a wonder about where to put the reflectors because uh, I've got a plate coming, I'm gonna cover that when it comes and the reflectors are supposed to go in here but but my good friend UK rider 
you just check out UK Rider 1, 1 UK Rider, sorry, 1 UK Rider, came up with, put them on there, common sense in it, and completely legal. So thank you buddy, that is an absolutely brilliant idea, and I'm going to do exactly that. I've got the little square ones, and I'm just going to bond them on there with some grip fill, and I've got to seal that hole under there where the wiring goes in, and inside, and up there. I've got to bond all this in yet. Still got to cover them up. So I've got some grip fill this afternoon. I'm going to go for a little ride. <laughs> Can't wait. Sunny day. Why not? It's about four degrees. But that's cool. It's sunny. And that's it for today. Got that line right, I think. I had to straighten them out a bit. Wanted more of a curve in them, really. But then when you ride along, they're just going to jangle around because they don't weigh anything. So if they're tight like that, the worst they'll do is just move about a bit. Which is alright. May take them off. Not sure. I kind of like it at the minute, though. That was a general idea. I think they need straightening up to that curvature. There's OCD for you, but it would look better if they're in keeping. So I've got to put the reflectors on the back of the mud guards, like one UK rider says. Got to do the grip fill, got to do the number plate, and something else I've forgotten. I did my list this morning. Is my fab name plate, damaged goods. My friend Klaus came up with this in Denmark. He actually came up with this. He made it because. He's responsible for making this as well, the original damage sign, which we've got a bit of paint on, we've got to scotch that off. I'm going to paint those in so the letters are black. You can kind of just see it, damaged goods. And that's going I've got in there. But this other mad idea to kind of suspend it like that. Some chains, proper metal chains, drill through here or weld a little clip on and just suspend it like a little swinging sign. There you go. So that's got to go on, number plate, reflectors, and some more rectification. I've got some little odds and sods to go on it, and they will be revealed. So there we are. That's it today. Chains. Done. So there we are. Uh, that's it for today. Chains on at last. Bit of fun decoration. Bit of darkness. How stupid is it looking now? Um, Still got some more ideas, things I want to explore, I'll chew them over my head, they might come as part of the project, they might not. Um, like I said earlier, it is ready to tow, but I just want to finish it completely before it takes a, a rolling debut voyage. We're working on a project to get a GoPro in place. Now, only because we can shed out a load of chaff on eBay, and make some money through that and a few other projects, and I should be able to get a decent camera so we can get out, get this film, a couple of mates and do it as well. So it will be a proper ride video when it's done. It could be a fair way, it could even be early in the new year, but I want to get it finished, so it's worth the wait, it really is. Um, that's everything, I've got to get out, get some grip fill now, jump on the high booster, take it for a little whiz. Week off this week, that's why I'm not uh, not working. Um, week's holiday, you have to have it, now you're fully, now I'm properly employed, you are, you have to have that holiday, it's, it's the law, which is annoying because I could have done with the overtime, but there we are, I'm going to nip down to work, funny enough, of all places, pick up a payslip, um, and on the way back I'll get some grip fill, the other bits and pieces I want to get, which will form part of the project, and uh, at the same time get this uploaded. So there we are. Thanks for tuning in and watching Dillboy's Garage. I always appreciate all the comments and all your support and faith. It is a daft project, but it's been great fun, and it's going to be a little bit more yet. So get easy, ride safe, let's see it through the winter. See you next time.